Hey, this is Old Newbie from the Old New Reviewer Show, and today we're going to do a quick tutorial video on how to make a custom control setup for Windows Mixed Reality controllers, which should be these controllers right here with the trackpads. These are the reference controllers. And for some reason, the reference controllers for Ruins Maze don't work either for the demo or for the full game. So after beating my head on against the wall, I decided to go ahead and try to make a custom controller uh, setup for Windows Mixed Reality trackpad controllers. And if you want to know the difference between the Windows Mixed Reality controllers, I got a video on all the different controllers for Windows Mixed Realities, which I'll post up in the corner. But um, right now we'll go ahead and just go through how to make the custom controllers uh, set up for Windows Mixed Reality trackpad controllers. So uh, the first thing you need to do is you have to be on Steam VR as its uh, OpenXR API. So Ruins Magus was actually made for OpenXR, um, but not for OpenVR, which is what Steam uses. So you have to use Steam's layer of OpenVR or their version of OpenXR over over open VR so you can't get to it from within VR because when you try to go to the the steam VR settings there's nothing here that allows you to actually pick your open XR open VR layer in steam and all of its wisdom kept it out of the VR settings so you actually have to go to your desktop and manage the menu the steam vr menu from there so you go to your desktop you pull up steam vr settings and it look almost looks the same except you get this extra setting right here for open xr and so you set your open xr runtime to steam vr which is actually open vr and so um so now you'll be able to manipulate the controllers and the controller settings will actually work with Ruins Magus, even though Ruins, because Ruins Magus was programmed for OpenXR, and so you have to make OpenXR run on Steam so the controllers will work with it. So that's the first thing, make sure you're running that. So now you go back and you fire up your Ruins Magus. Okay, so now you're in uh, Ruins Vegas, and you'll actually have, you'll see the controllers tracking on the actual uh, default controller settings, but you won't be able to select anything because none of the buttons work. The triggers, won't, buttons won't work or anything like that. Now, like I said, this will actually work if you have the HP Reverb controller with the A and B buttons, but because we're using the reference controllers, they don't have A and B buttons, and so there's nothing that you have here that will select and even the triggers not mapped so that won't work so the first thing you need to do is get into your steam menu and then go to your controller bindings and then you want to select custom and then you can click choose another now i went ahead and made some Ruins Vegas controllers and I, and I shared them out. So I made some new ones for the demo. So it says here that they're shared out. I don't know if they're actually shared um, now for the demo. If they're there, great. If not, here's how you actually do it. So you go in and you'll see a thing that says the official bindings and then your bindings, but you wanna go in and then edit the bindings, which will start up a, a new binding for you. Okay, and then so now you'll be on this page and now this page is going to look kind of it's going to look really wacky and it's going to be pretty intimidating, but it, it, it took me a while to kind of figure it out. And here's the other thing. It's going to be different for every game. So this is why you can't just have one particular um, way to map your controllers and have that work for every game. Every game is different because the way Steam controller mapping works is it's a layer deeper than just mapping controller to controller it actually goes into the game coding and looks at what the developer called each one of the settings so every game mapping is going to be different based on how the developer actually made controllers made controls for it 
So you may ask yourself, all right, so but how is it that the, uh, you know, like emulators, like, you know, the, the Wii emulator and all that stuff, how do they make it so easy? Well, if you think about it this way, the Wii game system is only made for one game type of controller, which is the Wii controller. So now you map several different types of joysticks, but it's only mapped to that one original controller, the Wii controller. When it comes to VR, however, you have many different controllers for each game. So each game has to be made to work with many different types of controllers. So that's what you're gonna see here. So this menu at the top, this is what the developer made for his game. He made controllers, he made all these controller inputs into his game, his game actual coding. So he coded for the HP Mixed Reality controller. He controlled it for the Vive. He he uh, coded for the uh, the Cosmo. He Cosmo. Uh, he uh, coded for motion control. He he coded for the touch. So those are all the controllers that he coded for. And so now what we want to do is we want to find one of these controllers and map it to the Windows Mixed Reality controllers. So it's going to see that I have these Windows Mixed Reality controllers and that's what it's going to see here. And so now I want to map these Windows Mixed Reality controllers to one of the things that the dev actually uh, uh, configured into his, his game. And so now you see these little numbers here. These little numbers map to all of the different functions that these controllers have that the dev programmed for. So you can see for the HTC Vive, he programmed a grip, a grip press, the menu select, trigger, trackpad, and all that stuff for 12 different functions on the Vive controller. And then for the Cosmos, has more buttons, so he can he actually programmed in 14 different uh, actions and so on for each one of these. Now you notice here, the HP Mixed Reality controller has nothing on it. That's because I've already mapped them. So this actually had uh, 12 buttons that the de developer actually programmed in for and I've mapped all 12 and as you map each one of them they'll actually the number will go down until it's zero so you know that you've mapped all of the functions so the first thing you do and, and so oh, another note here is that these 12 things the names of these they're also going to be different so the developer actually named these actual actions so he named the actions grip grip pressed menu select and trigger so those are not going to be universal across from game to game either so it's all going to depend on what the developer actually um, made these out to be so without with that out of the way here's how you go through each one of them so you go ahead and hit the plus button and when you hit the plus you'll get a thing that says unused. And so now you have to pick one of these things. So you'll, but you'll kind of think like, all right, well, I already pressed trigger. Why does this thing say trigger? Well, you have to map the trigger to the, so we'll say now we want the trigger to actually act as a trigger. So and that's why you put that there. And then after you do that, there'll be a use as, and so now you actually have to pick some type of function. So let's just go ahead and let's say add trigger. So now trigger's there. And so now you'll see it'll have a, th a thing underneath it, right? And so I want to pull, pull. What do I want the pull to do? I want the pull to be a trigger. Now, now this is vector one actions. This is what the developer called it, trigger. Now imagine if this, say, were a first-person shooter from another developer and he wanted the trigger to be, you know, gun. So he would name this Vector1 action gun. In this case, the Ruins Magus developer called it trigger. Now maybe that was for him, you know, made it easy for him as he was coding, but trigger is called trigger, so that kind of makes it easy. So when you pull it, the action is pulling, you want that to actually say, and then this action would, would be trigger. I don't want it because I already have it mapped. For, for when I pull the trigger, I want it to act as a trigger. And then he has another thing in here called trigger pressed. And so this is, this is um, a little bit unusual, but the trigger is analog. And so when you pull the trigger, you get the analog function of the trigger going down. But then when the trigger is all the way down, that functions as another that functions as something else. And so 
that becomes a, a click so you want to you want the trigger press to be a click i know it's kind of weird but there's the analog function of measuring where the trigger is and then there's the trigger all the way down and so that that's that's a click so let me get rid of that and so now here is where it gets funky so now there's no a and b buttons right because we're trying to map to the hp mixed reality controller now what the developer called the a and b buttons he called them primary button and secondary button so i'm saying that the primary button on the hp reverb controller is the a button and the secondary button is the b button but here we don't have a and b buttons so i wanted to use the trackpad as the a and b button so what you can do is use the trackpad so when you when i added the trackpad function i get the option of using the trackpad as a trackpad or I get the option of using the trackpad as a D-pad, and that's built into the Vive. Uh, that's built into uh, Steam VR to for Windows Mixed Reality to use the trackpad as a trackpad or a D-pad. So in this case, I chose to use it as a D-pad because then I can get north, south, west, and east, which actually equates to almost mapping four buttons, which you'll see here: north, south, east, and west. So what I did was I mapped the deep the d-pad the mode is clicking so actually you can click in on the trackpad so north i wanted that pressing up on top in the north quadrant is the primary button which is all a for hp mixed reality controller and then south is the secondary button which i wanted that to be b and then here you'll see for west thumbstick clicked in right so that's another function that he has included but i wanted to make that the the western quadrant to click in and have that be the thumbstick. Why? Because in for Windows Mixed Reality controllers, when you press in the thumbstick, that brings up the Steam VR controller. That brings up the Steam VR menu. And so I didn't want to have those two buttons conflated together. So when I pressed in the joystick, that it would bring up the Steam VR, but then also bring up the you know the Ruins Magus menu. And so it it would it would do both functions. So I mapped that to be the Western Hemisphere over here on the on the trackpad, so that it w it wasn't the menu button for clicking in the joystick. Okay, the palm trigger, that also known as the grip button, and again, the developer has grip and grip pressed. Now, again, the functionality on the HP Reverb controller, the grip is an analog on the HP Reverb, so just like the trigger, this will map the grip button going up and down in analog until it's all the way depressed and that counts as a click now the, the wmr reference controller with the trackpad does not have an analog grip button it's just a button so this right here is kind of worthless but i went ahead and mapped it anyway but really what matters here is the clicked in and the grip pressed because now we have a grip pressed for our grip button mapped okay the menu button, which is our, our little menu button, so that was simple enough, so I mapped the menu to the menu button, which is the tiny button on the Windows Mixed Reality Controller. And then the joystick, again, I want the joystick to be a joystick, so I mapped that as what the, what the developer called a thumbstick. So you get the analog functions up, down, left, and right of the joystick as the thumbstick. And that's, that's it, and then so there were actually four more things left and so it had haptics so the vi the developer called that vibrate and so i mapped the vibrate function to the haptics and then i mapped the pointer to the tip so that the tip so you can see the little arrow coming out of this uh steam vr thing so that's it's coming out of the tip so that's where i put it i put the pointer coming from the tip and then the base is the device pose and so I have that as the base. So that actually tells you how to orient it. And so that's how I map those. And that's it. Chords is something for combining two buttons. There were no chords. And once I mapped all those things, I had no more, um, I had no more functions or actions to map. And that was it. And so that's how you map um, the actions to the Windows Mixed Reality controller.
And again, this is going to be different for every game. Some developers, they may not have made actual um, inputs for all these different types of controllers. They may have just made, you know, an input for maybe the, you know, the Oculus or something like that or, or the Vive wand and, and that's it. And so then you got to try to map whatever they made for the Vive wand, those actions to a Windows Mixed Reality controller. So and then some and then sometimes it doesn't even work. So like in Ruins Magus, um, you know I've I didn't mirror these even though this says mirror. I didn't want to mirror because I wanted I wanted to program each one of these separate. But it, within the game, even though you've mapped all of the actions within the game, you may have different controls for the left and the right. Right, the right hand may do something different than the left hand, that, and that's in the game. But that's okay because the actions are mapped. And how he programmed the game to use those particular actions on each one of the controllers will still map. So I, I know it, I know it's kind of weird, and that's the thing about this this actual um, controller map. It's it's much more it, it's a deeper level than say maybe an emulator where you do controller to controller. This actually goes a level deeper into the actual developer coding and how they coded the game because. How they coded the game is going to be different because we're in because we're in the PC environment. You have to program for all different types of controllers, unlike a, uh, a console where they only have to program for one controller. So that's it. Um, I know I went kind of long, and I know it's kind of confusing, but um, hopefully, one the these things that I've mapped and published to the workshop. Hopefully, you can get those from the demo and the full game now. And if you don't. Hopefully you can go through here and go through this video and see how I mapped it and then map your own for the Windows Mixed Reality controllers. And there you go. All right. Hopefully that helps somebody out there and we'll see you in VR.